My name is Ryan Cameron, and on behalf of the Team Church Network, we just want to welcome you. Good to have you hanging out with us today. We're going to have a really fun discussion and hopefully a helpful discussion on how we engage our church, how we address online giving in this season that all of us have no doubt been addressing and walking through the challenges, pastoring people, loving on people. And I'm really excited because we have some uh, incredible men joining us today, our panelists. And I want to introduce them really quick uh, to get us going so you know who they are and the incredible value that each one of them bring to the table. So first off, I just want to start with Pastor Pace Hartfield. And uh, he's from an incredible church, One Place Church in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So if you ever want to take a great vacation, you want to go hang out with Pastor Pace. Uh, But he uh, served for many years as an executive pastor, um, part of a great church. And now he and his wife, Sarah, have been leading uh, for many years, planted a church up in the great Northwest. And they are doing some really incredible things. So he has great perspective he's going to bring today for us. Second, we have... Mr. Troy Pollock, and he is, as many of you know, part of an incredible team, the PushPay team. He is the chief ambassador at PushPay, and Troy uh, has has just done so many great things for the local church. He spends day in and day out finding and helping ways, looking for ways to help local pastors and churches increase generosity and engagement in their churches. So Troy has just a, a massive and broad understanding of online engagement. So he's going to be really valuable today. So Troy, thank you for hanging out with us. And then we have Chris Siebold, who is uh, the finance director and a part of our executive team at Champion Center. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ryan Cameron. I'm part of the Champion Center team. I'm an executive director here at Champion Center, as well as one of our location pastors. So we want to get right into this conversation, but I just wanted to give a quick second for Pace Go ahead and say hello to everyone. Hey, what's up, team? Good to be with you guys today. And Troy, if you want to say what's up to everybody. Hey, what's up, team? I'll quote Pace. Good to be with you today. <laughs> and Chris, we can't, we, can't, we can't go on if you don't say hello to us. Hey, what's up, team? Good to be with you today. Okay, so I want to start, I want to start off, and we're going to get into some questions. And again, if you're just joining... Uh, make sure to add your chat. We're taking questions. So if you didn't get time to submit your question ahead of time, please go ahead and send your question into us. We would love to make sure we address that question. But Pastor Pace, I want to throw the first one your way. You know, a lot of us are wondering in this season we're in, church is looking so different than what we're used to gathering together physically. And one of the questions we got that I think is on everyone's mind is how often should we talk about giving? during this season we're in. And another way of going at that is how are you encouraging giving while also being empathetic to people's fears and their real concerns about the economy, job loss, all the challenges we're facing. So Pastor Pace, I'll throw that your way to get us started. Yeah, coming out stronger out of the gate. I think this is probably one of the leading questions in all of our hearts and minds. And, you know, just on the front end here, pastors, leaders, we have to kind of have this settled in our own hearts and mind that God Uh, is in control. When all this was happening last week and all across the nation, we were all trying to figure out, you know, what we were going to do. We were going to go church online. I happened to be with a friend of mine who's in the middle of um, a pretty significant capital campaign where he's needing to raise a, a, a tremendous amount of money just on top of his normal giving. And I've been speaking faith into this guy's life and encouraging him and pray for him. And I had to catch myself um, to not allow fear to control the narrative in my mind in that moment and to really lean in faith. So just on the, on the front side of this, I think for all of us just to, and that for me, I don't know about you guys, Ryan, for me, this is a daily battle. Uh, I have to check my news feed. I have to check what I am feeding my heart and mind. So I say all that to say, um, foundationally, we need to be doing that. I do, however, think that we need to be sensitive to how we talk about giving during this time, but not fearful. And so in our online experience last week, uh, we're not overemphasizing it and we're not underemphasizing it. We're giving it the same amount of uh, time and attention in our service as we would in any others. Now we're doing some other things and we may get into this conversation later. We're doing some other things online just to, to make sure that engagement's there and making it easy for them 
to connect uh, to giving uh, to giving. So um, I don't know. It's been helpful for me to remember that giving is just one aspect of people's obedience and trusting God. And just as if I'm not changing, talking to them about any other area in their life because of this season of trust and obedience, I'm not, we're not slowing down on speaking to that. I know we're going to get into some more details of what that looks like and what that sounds like. Um, But I do begin, right. I believe Ryan, that begins with us kind of settling in our hearts and every day as pastors, leaders, being confident that God's got this. Yeah. I think that's great perspective pace. And, you know, what you're addressing, I think for all of us, that is a holistic perspective of just how we would, you know, when things are good, how we would pastor people normal, stay in that same flow. Mm -hmm. And I love that encouragement and that's real life. And it's common for all of us to feel that fear. I think, you know, I, I think we would be lying to ourselves if anyone in this season, you know, if you're a lead pastor, or even if you're a team member, executive level, or you're, a volunteer leader helping in this way in your church, it's easy to feel that fear. That's very human. It's very normal. And um, to your point, Pace, I think this is a great time for us to lean into God and really remember what are the disciplines, the spiritual disciplines that we continually to build week in and week out to build a a great life and to to live on God's word. So great encouragement there. Troy, I want to kick one over your way. And For those of you that have joined and you didn't hear Troy's introduction earlier, not only is Troy the chief ambassador at PushPay, uh, Troy lives in this world and and really is always at the helm of helping and encouraging churches how to increase generosity. Um, But he also sits in a really unique seat in that he leads a legacy team. And legacy team is people that have the, the gift of giving, right? So sometimes these look like the entrepreneurs, the business owners. So Troy, how do how do you recommend and, and what are you even doing in this season to encourage consistent givers to continue to give in this season? Uh, yeah, first of all, thanks for allowing me to be on this, Pastor Ryan. It's an honor. Um, you know, with my work hat on at PushPay, uh, we're serving so many churches right now. And this is a moment in time where they're thankful that they do have digital thing to offer. So if there's any of our participants that are kind of leaning into this and they don't, I think the first thing is you got to offer something online for people to still participate because gatherings in person are not happening. So whether that's a PayPal or just get a link or a Google form, you know, have a digital opportunity for people to still exercise that generosity, assuming that a lot of the folks on this call do have that to piggyback off of what Pastor Pace was saying don't make it feel awkward. Don't give it too much airtime, but then don't not talk about it because you're scared or you don't have eyeballs in front of you. One of the tricks that we learned in the last couple of weeks, and we've been helping uh, the churches that we're partnered with at PushPay do this is we kind of understand the viewership curve, you know, kind of at the beginning of a broadcast, you got a lot of eyes, they're highly engaged, they're all motivated. So if you um, are one of those churches that do the giving moment or the call to giving at the end, might you consider bringing that up a little forward? And I know we did this at Champion Center and it wasn't awkward at all, but bring it earlier in the broadcast so that folks do know that they can participate. Still use those sliders. You know, if you have a text to give option, the same stuff you would use on your screens in your auditorium, put that on the lower third. Let people visually see how to participate. Uh, another question that we're hearing all the time, Pastor Ryan, is how do I bring cash and check givers over to a digital? Uh, there's so many different philosophies and methodologies of how to do that. Um, but I think a first easy way to do that is just making it known, even through a simple email to those cash and check givers. You can segment those through your CHMS or whatever back end system you're doing, just sending them. Uh, communication, letting them know that you do have this digital option. Thank them for their continued generosity, but might they consider participating through a digital means during this COVID-19 time that we don't know how long it's going to be, but we don't want to miss out on those contributions that they're not able to put them in the plate. So those are some things that I would say, quick handles, pretty simple. I think we all can do that no matter if you're running thousands or a startup church. Again, just make it earlier in the broadcast that you're doing. Make people aware of it. Continue to use the media slides, text options. Make people aware that they can participate on your website, through your app, all the avenues in place. And then for those that are uh, faithful cash and check givers, 
might you consider reaching out to them? Not uh, uh, ringing their arm out, asking for contributions, but just to say, hey, during this time, we know you still want to exercise your generosity, whether you're a first fruits giver or an occasional giver. Might you consider doing that as we're not gathering in our weekly auditoriums? So those are some handles that we're using and a lot of churches that we're partnered with in this space are used in this as well too. And they're seeing some, some good dividends on those. Love that. Troy, thank you for that too, because I think sometimes when, sometimes people, and I've noticed with, with leaders in churches, we forget to be practical just in, in, in our everyday flow. And right now, sometimes the practicality with the, the quickness of us adjusting and flipping over to church online and trying to figure that out, we forget the practicality of giving people time, putting it, making it present, making people aware. And I think you'll notice for those, those of you that have been around the, the, the Team Church Tribe or the Champion Center Tribe or the One Place Church, or you know, we all approach generosity holistically. So we talk practically, we talk inspirationally, and we'll get to some of, some of that. But Troy, I think that was really valuable. And I want to just go a little further. You went there a little bit, but Chris Siebold, um, he's our finance director at Champion Center and also an executive team member. Um, Chris, what are some practical ways, just to, to go a little bit further on that question where Troy went? of how we motivate people who are the weekly cash check. Typically, they're consistent in the life of our church, but they, they're like, nope, I do cash and check only. How do we actually have that conversation? What are you doing as a team uh, behind the scenes to engage people and say, would you consider digital options? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good, that's a really good question. There are there's so many people that feel strongly about it for one reason or another. And so there's kind of two things that, that I'm thinking through. Number one, I want to identify the people so that I can communicate to them. And then secondly, I want to identify the barriers so I can remove them. Uh, like those are the two pieces that I'm thinking through right now. For some people that choose to give cash and check, it's, a, it's, it's an awareness thing. Troy, you mentioned that. Uh, for some people, it's, it's a matter of um, communicating the why behind that. And uh, in a season like this, I, I come from the San Francisco Bay Area and so many of my friends, family, uh, churches that I'm connected to are in a shelter in place order. And, you know, luckily right now in, in the Tacoma, Seattle area, we don't have a shelter in place. So I can technically communicate to those people. Yeah, you can mail your check. All that stuff works still just fine. But that's not necessarily the case all across the country. And I think in those examples, it's okay to communicate that because the people that want to give cash and check, they're doing it. It's just if they don't realize that, oh, my check is going to get stuck in the mail for four weeks. Oh, yeah, I probably don't want to do that. Right. Um, there's nobody in the office to process that check. So uh, I think it's okay to communicate that when you're in that kind of a shelter in place type of a scenario. You know, you want to do that very, very delicately and don't, you know, don't just throw it out there. Hey, please don't do this. But uh, I think the people that are going to send those checks, they want to, they want that money to go somewhere to make a difference and make an impact in the community. So I think, A, just identifying those people and communicating with them. Uh, so many platforms are different. And so the way that you go through your CHMS and try to identify those people um, may be a little bit unique to you. For me, uh, we already did this. Uh, we went through this week and basically just pulled out all digital transactions over the last six months that left us with cash and check transactions, filtered that down to just names, emails, and phone numbers. And then that, that's our target list. It's not an exact science because some of those people uh, maybe gave cash and check one week and then they have given digital in the past, but it at least narrows it down. For us, we're about 70% of our total income is digital, which is, which is good. Uh, that keeps going up, uh, thanks to PushPay, shameless plug uh, to PushPay. But uh, honestly, it, it really, really helps. And having that partnership um, it has been a, a huge yeah. asset for us. So it, it helps us to kind of zero in on the people that actually need this communication. Because here's the other side of it, the ones that are already doing that, to go with a very pragmatic conversation to the people that are already giving digital can come across sounding a little bit tone deaf. Like, I'm already doing this. Right. Don't give me all these practical steps on how to set up my giving. The other side of that is the barriers. Uh, I think for some people, there's a how barrier. 
And whether that's a certain demographic of people that don't want to use technology or are unsure how to use technology, uh, for them, we, we produced a, um, basically just a screen capture with a voiceover instruction on how to use text to give, how to use our mobile app, and how to give through a web browser. And that is going out to, to really all of our givers um, in, a, in a small way, but it's going to all of our cash and check givers in a very obvious way. And then at the end of that, we actually, uh, just for the, the COVID-19 season that we're in, uh, we also set up a hotline. So if people get stuck, uh, they can call into a phone number, they can reach out to an email address, and we will have team members ready to answer their questions and help them navigate. So that's the how barrier people. And then I kind of already spoke to the why barrier people, the ones that they're already giving uh, consistently. They're just not connecting the fact that my check might not get processed for a period of time based on these closures. Um, I know some people, I've even had young people in my own demographic come up and say, hey, I actually used to give digital and I went back to cash and check because I found myself disconnecting the spiritual act uh, mm -hmm. just mentally or emotionally. And, and for me personally, in my own walk, I wanted, to, I wanted to write something down and put it in the offering. I totally respect that. For that person, they definitely want to continue to give. You just have to connect that, hey, that's not going to get processed for a period of time. So identify the people, communicate to them, and then identify the barriers and try to remove them. In my experience, there's a how barrier and there's a why barrier. If you can address those, I think you got a good chance of success. Great. Pa Pastor Pace, thank you, Chris. That was, that was really helpful. And, and I think the courage sometimes it takes, you know, if, if you're not used to doing that, if you're a newer pastor or maybe, you know, for a lot of lead pastors, this conversation can be a tough one if, if you're not used to it or if you haven't, you know, built out the skill set. And I think a lot of, you know, practically what we're sharing today really will help you. We're going to get in just a little bit. We have some questions that are going to address the heart side, the vision side. We've been talking very practical. So like I mentioned earlier, we love to be really, really holistic about generosity. Um, but Pastor Pace, before we get off of this topic, because you are a lead pastor, would you just talk to us, what are you doing to encourage your team? What are you doing yourself uh, through this process of just reaching out to people who historically have not been digital, um, but they are great contributors? Or are you just a unicorn and, and everyone in your church is, is already digital? No, not everybody's digital in our case. I think we're between 65 and 70 uh, percent. And so we did see, you know, this past week, what we would consider container money, or, you know, some people may call it plate money. Um, we did see a little bit of drop in that, but we also, we, we saw an increase in new uh, contributors who signed up online. So um, a big part of that was, and I don't want to rush right ahead on a question, but a big part of that um, was, in our service flow, our online host, giving people a heads up, even like um, a song before we got to giving, you know, just in the chat room, hey guys, want to let you know that we're going to have the opportunity to serve, you know, in our giving in just a moment, you're going to see a link. Um, we did that before the actual, you know, giving segment or the offering segment in our service. Um, Similar to what Chris said, using slides, lower thirds, text to give, all those things. These are all things within our service um, that we're doing. And then I'm actually going to be uh, filming today just a general update, again, for our church and uh, just really celebrating the connectedness we're seeing them have. Uh, with each other online and on, in, in, on community. And within that, going to mention um, this way of continuing to worship and also really emphasizing that we are in a, in a time where we can, as a church, uh, with our collective giving, really make uh, a continued impact in our region. And yeah. this is really time for the church to, to rise up. So really giving vision to that of what we can do more together and using that to invite those who are giving typically physically to join online by give and give that way. Very good. Very helpful, uh, Pastor Pace. And again, if you're, for whatever reason, if you got here late and you're joining us, I just wanted to mention, we do have questions. I see a few more questions have been submitted and really appreciate that. We will actually get to those questions 
Um, but if you are coming on and you're like, don't have full context yet, just want to say my name's Ryan. I've got Troy Pollock here from Push Pay, Pastor Pace Hartfield, who we just heard from from One Place Church, and Chris Siebold, who is a finance director, executive team member at Champion Center. So if you do have other questions and they haven't been addressed yet, we still have some more questions that you all submitted earlier that we're going to continue to walk through, but just wanted to pause quickly to invite you to add any new questions that you might have, or as we go on here, if you get questions, submit those, and we're going to do our best to get to them and address them. Okay, so I'm going to go maybe Troy and Pace on this next one. How do we be attention grabbing during an online giving segment? So we talked about this, we, we hit it earlier, but now that all of us are finding ways to broadcast, and if you didn't have church online before, I feel like we're all figuring that out now, whether you're doing that through Facebook or YouTube or you do ch some version of a church online platform. Wh what do we do to be attention grabbing right in that early segment? And Troy, maybe I'll kick to you first on that. Uh, what are some ideas that we can stay inspirational in that segment, not to lose people? Yeah, I think this is key. I mentioned it a moment ago, but kind of what Pastor Pace just said, bring some of the information up in the beginning, whether it's your online host, whether it's in chat, whether it is your senior leader in the online broadcast segment, uh, introduce it early on. You know, Pastor Ryan, I think that, you know, the word unprecedented has been used, I think, in this last week more than the history of the word <laughs> of unprecedented. <laughs> but, um, you know, just what Champion Center is doing and so many churches out there just really leading from the front and saying, you know what, we're going to put differences aside right now and we're really going to collectively join forces so the capital C church is strong. Yeah. Um, Elevation, they opened up one of their locations in Charlotte and invited all local pastors who don't have the ability to do a video capture to come in in our slots they're going to capture it. They're going to do post-production and send it back out to that church so that they can run online. Awesome. Amazing. Things that we're doing up here and feeding people during this time that can't get the toilet paper, they can't get the food that they need. Yeah. So many people are losing their jobs or going on unemployment. There's so much good opportunity that we come alongside and help and tell those stories. I think at the core of people, there is generosity inside of us. We all go to church. We're putting our hard-earned dollars, returning back to God. And I think just telling those stories, connecting those dots, I don't want us to lose the power of just simply storytelling, whether that's small or large, whether you're video capturing pastors in the local area or you're making meals or handing out rolls of toilet paper. That, uh, that grabs people's attention and that allows them to say, I'm giving to something just bigger than what I'm watching here today. And I love that. And I think that that really draws people in and it makes the capital C church really, really strong. Yeah. Um, bunch of other ways to do that. You know, there's, there's Facebook groups that you can create. There's social media posts that you can do. Um, a lot of the churches that are uh, represented here on the panel and also viewing this have uh, prayer teams as well too. You know, let, let people know that you're praying for them during this time. Let people know that we're going to make it through. We're going to come out on the other side stronger. The church is the hope of the world. And here's right. how we're demonstrating that. Um, I think that really puts people at ease and makes them want to participate. So some of those are some of the thoughts. I'll flip it over to Pastor Paste right now. Yeah, oh, I, I, I would just lean in on all that you were saying about storytelling and even really leaning in on the uniqueness of, of being online and the opportunity that they have one to invite friends who would they never walk into the doors of a church, but they will join us online. But finding some stories, even from this past week of, you know, a victory of lives changed of, you know, um, I'm going to be sharing this week uh, in our opportunity about a guy who has a brother in Canada. He shared the live feed and it was the first uh, church service his brother had ever gone to, first sermon he ever sat through. He, he was impacted by it greatly. And this is the statement that this guy uh, that goes to our church said. He said, fear gave me an opportunity. And so there's this something very powerful about that online. So, so sharing that story in the context of, hey, you know, we are, we are not physically meeting, but we are still um, spiritually making a, a difference in our region together. So I think telling stories like that also, you know, things that you can do within, you know, your city, we're doing a, a non-perishable food drive right now. 
we'll bring that to the forefront just to let people know, hey, you know, we, we are making a difference still, even though we're not gathering. And really what it's going to do, I think, for our church as a whole is it's going to show our people what we already know to be true, but in a very real way that church just isn't Sunday. Church is every day and church awesome. is God's people making an impact in a region. And, and I just I, thank you. Yeah, Chris, go ahead. I was just going to add in that like that's that's a, so perfect. The thing that I, I t- tend to think about is I think the natural instinct here is to do whatever it takes to stabilize giving, which the response to that is way too pragmatic conversation and way too short sighted as for us as church leaders. Like we're in this for the long haul. And the, the stories that are going to be happening around us every single day are pure gold that like over the next couple of weeks and months, we may have more life change stories and community impacts than we have over the course of an entire year sometimes. And so like being able to, being able to capture those stories in order to celebrate them, I see as a barrier. Like we, we talked as a team, um, hey, this is not our creatives team responsibility to listen for these yeah. stories. Wow. Every wow. single one of you, you that's hear great. anything that's cool. You see any comment in the chat section. You, you see somebody, like a youth pastor went over and uh, was able to connect with a youth that hasn't been, uh, been around for a little while. And that person is now connecting in on the, uh, I know that last night our, our youth did Instagram live. And at one point it had over 400 people logged in. Like, like those are the game changing type things that the innovation of this season is bringing to the forefront. And, and it's because of your giving, this is even possible in the first place and being able to celebrate that way more than even here's how, yes, let's talk about removing barriers, but that should be like 20% of the communication and the story be 80% of the communication. Because, Chris, when you captured somebody's heart with the stories that we're talking about, they're yep. going to figure out how to spend 30 seconds yep. to put their card details, their email, and their phone number to submit that contribution because you captured their heart. And, totally. Pastor Ryan, the software that we use to live broadcast, there is a little hand there that you can raise your hand yeah. if you said that salvation prayer. That's right. And during one of our services, there was like 14. We were watching it tick up. That is worth celebrating right there. That's people's lives change. To Pace's point, was that somebody that would have never stepped foot in one of our building locations, and now they raise their hand, they have a relationship with Jesus. You know, there was somebody at our watch party who uh, we began to talk, I think it was about two or three hours. If we were in a normal church gathering with an agenda, with a service flow, as we're serving in the kids and all the other areas, we wouldn't have been able to have that moment or that time to a lot, three hours of conversation and really doing deep life together. So I think that there's, yeah, there's a challenge that we're all going through, but there's so much rich That's right. story of lives changed, yeah. lives going to heaven, people really coming close together and the church being the church that we just can't lose sight of it. And tell those stories, encourage you to tell them, tell them, tell them, repeat them. Because ultimately, people in the core of who they are, they're going to figure out how to use that online form or that text number to participate once you capture their heart. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, well, Pastor Pace, I, I'd, be, I'd just be interested just to piggyback off that because Pastor Kevin and I have been talking a little bit about this. But when you kind of capture the story like this and celebrate those wins, does it help you as a lead pastor to like not feel so intimidated about even talking about this? Because when you know your church is out there doing great things and impacting yeah. people and lives are changed. Now it makes it so much easier to talk about that giving conversation because it's not just about business as usual. Do you, what are your thoughts on that? 100% because you're, what it is is it's feeding your faith. And I think again, what this is going to do for all of us for our churches is it's going to really cause us to lean in, to learn, to hear for story what is God doing in the lives of people Great. Um, and create avenues for those stories to be reported. We have an email address, my story at oneplacechurch.com where we're constantly encouraging people. Hey, if God spoke to you, if God's moving in your life, if we can pray for you, um, you know, this is one avenue that you can get us to story. But yeah, as a lead pastor, uh, it, it certainly um, bolsters my faith because, Hey, we're used to seeing on a Sunday, you know, hands raised, you know, maybe 
people coming down front, seeing yeah. the emotion of the impact of a word or worship and not having that physically now, uh, we have to fight to be right. hearing what God is doing. And so a big part of that is exactly what you said. Um, this is our entire church's and team's responsibility to, to lean in and listen to what God is doing and then get those testimonies in front of the church as a whole. So I think, I mean, honestly, we are at the crux of what really hits home. And I think what we're saying now for everyone listening, it can be really easy, like we said, to just be so focused on the details, which you have to have right. And we by no means want to create a dumb dichotomy. We need to have all the structure, the details, the actual pathways, the avenues, make that simple, clear, communicatable, make it as easy as possible for people. But all of that doesn't work if we don't remember why we're doing what we're doing. And oftentimes, one of the things that I have the opportunity to do and be a part of at Champion Center is I lead the, the writing for our giving segments every week at church. And so we constantly are asking the question or finding a way to tell stories so that we remember why we're doing what we're doing. And one of the, one of the lines that we use pretty often in our church, and I picked it up from a pastor friend of mine, but we'll often say, say this, we'll say, look, your giving or our giving does not get us to heaven, which we all know to be true theologically. But the reality is our giving actually helps make it possible for other people to get to heaven. And, you know, the, the whole treasures in heaven concept idea. And so every time we share a story, for me as a, as a pastor, as a leader, it like every week when I'm writing and collecting stories, I get absolutely amped and jacked up when I read stories of life change. And that fuels me to do ministry because I'm seeing what Jesus is doing in people's hearts. I'm seeing the Holy Spirit at work. And, and what an opportunity we have to tell that story back to our church and to realize once we create a clear pathway where we can all actually start collecting those regularly, you do see and you're now aware like, oh my goodness, look at all the change. And Troy, to your point and some of your point earlier, we're finding ways even right now, we took the wins from church online. So what I would say to everyone, whether you're broadcasting on Facebook or Instagram Live or you have a more formal platform, make sure whatever those wins are, collect them, read the chats, take a snapshot. Like we literally took a snapshot of a chat thread I was on this week. And then we, the digital hands raised and we've been celebrating that. We're going to celebrate that again this weekend at Church Online. And I think that inspiration reminds people like, wow, this is actually making a difference and Church Online actually can make a difference. And I, so here's the question that's next that I think it, we're answering it already, but I want to let you guys go at this. This is a question that, that many people have had. How long do you think a church can thrive by being online only? So any of you that want to take that question, how long do we think church can thrive by being like, if we're here for many more weeks, how long can this last? I think, we, well, I know that we will thrive as long as God's people thrive. And so again, uh, we will thrive as long as we lead. As I know we're pioneering here. I know we're doing some things that, you know, in history have never been done and, and unprecedented. Uh, but I think we, I think that is in our hands as as pastors, as church leaders, uh, the longevity of uh, being able to survive this, I think is, uh, I mean, obviously, ultimately, it's in God's hands, but God uses people, and yeah. God uses people's faith and obedience and how we respond and how we lead out. Yeah, I, for me, and maybe I'm weird, maybe this is weird, so just, just humor me for a second, but man, I feel potentially more deeply connected to my faith in a unique way than ever before. And what I mean by that mm. is I think back to the book of Acts church and the adversity that they had to work through. I've been fortunate to live in America uh, since 1986 and never was I persecuted for going to church. Never did I have a barrier going to church. I could go to as many churches as I wanted to and worship with as many or as few people as I wanted to my entire life. And so this adversity of trying to do church as I've literally always known my entire life has really in some kind of weird way made me reflect on, on the book of Acts church and what they pushed through. And it's just so amazing to me that in arguably the most persecuted time of that church, when it should have died and it should have gone away, it actually exploded. Awesome. And um, man, I just, 
I just see as I completely echo you, Pastor Pace, as much as the, the people of God thrive, the church is going to innovate through and the church is going to thrive through it. It may look different, but it doesn't have to stop. It doesn't have to be swallowed up by what's happening around us. I think actually it's going to grow in spite of. I love that. Chris, thanks for uh, dating yourself. So you're 30. <laughs> love it, man. Uh, I agree with everything Chris and Pace uh, both said, Pastor Ryan. You and I have talked at nauseum how long something like this can go and is it online or is it offline? And I just think that that's maybe the wrong question. I think it's both. I think that to quote Pastor Pace, this is going to continue as long as God allows it to continue. And the beauty of technology is that it's here. Let's not shy away from it. Let's not run or get intimidated. Let's embrace it for a moment like today and help it be the conduit for us to deliver the message that has been unchanging. Like the method right now is different than it looked like two weeks ago. Let's all agree about, about that. But we've never been married to methods. We've been married to the message that is unchanging. So I firmly agree that online can continue as long as technology can support it. And I work for a technology company and I thank God that we have technology to help uh, get the message out. But I don't think that it can only stay online. I think there's offline. I think that that's where lives change when people come alongside each other, look eyeball to eyeball. So I still think we need to capture those moments, whether it's a watch party, whether it's coffee, whether it's picking up the phone and praying with somebody. I mean, you got to obey the rules, elbow, high five them, can't have more than 10. Like I'm not trying to have you not obey what, what the health organization is saying. However, I don't think that it can just stay online into uh, perpetuity. I think there has to be an offline um, moment in time when we do life together with other humans. I think we were created to do that in connection and in community. And I think that there's other ways to do that uh, even during this time. So I think it's a both end. I don't think it's an either or, but I think that through the power of technology, we can continue to share this message forever through this. Right. And I don't, I don't know if the church is ever going to go back to the way it was pre COVID-19. I think now that we're all forced in leveraging technology, some of it um, we raised our hands and we were ready for some churches out there. They were just thrown into this and they don't have any idea, but they're doing Facebook live through an iPhone right now. And that's how they're engaging. But I think this is that moment in time. It kind of wrecks like the ADBC. It's going to wreck the church in a positive way. And we're all going to learn the power of technology and how to Great. share uh, that message exponentially. Great. So I have some of the other questions you guys, thank you. That was incredibly helpful. Uh, some of the questions that I want to get to, we have uh, some, some panelists adding some new questions today, but a couple of things that are, I think looming for all of us, uh, they're bigger questions. And one of the ones I want to address first, um, someone mentioned that they have what they would call an upcoming, like a legacy offering. Some people call it heart for the house. It's like an annual offering and they're due and scheduled to do it in this season. What would you recommend in this season? Should they keep it? Should they pause it? Uh, Pace, I'm going to throw that your way. Well, I'm just sitting there processing that right now, like uh, in front of everyone, Um, you know, imagining that again, I know I have a friend who is in that situation and I am not, but he is, and he's moving forward. Uh, and in fact, he, he just walked uh, some of those um, legacy givers through a potential, you know, um, site. And um, honestly, I think that there's a side of this that only that the pastor and the leadership of that local church can, yeah. de- can, can decide, you know, That's your right. people, you know, um, you know, the situation, uh, you know, you know how this is impacting, you know, the resource. And so I just think you have to take a very, you know, prayerful, um, you know, systematic look at, you know, making your next step and, yeah. and just do it with all and do it with all wisdom. I don't, I, I don't think there's a, an answer just across the board to yep. say, yes, keep doing it. No, deep do it. Yeah. Just in faith, just keep going, keep going. <laughs> Well, the wise thing may be for someone is to keep vision in front of them, but in front of the church and like, you know, nothing's changed. God knew this was coming when we began this. Um, but the wise thing may be, but 
um, as we navigate this season, we're going to, um, you know, take this offering a month from now, that's two right. months from now. I think that's very wise. And I would encourage all of you uh, local pastors, or if you're a staff member and team, and maybe you're in the seat of encouraging your pastor, um, the, having a few other voices that can speak into your life is really helpful because sometimes we're so emotionally engaged in our own story. So I, I, I like what you said. And Pace, we, we, we actually right now, we know pastors in both scenarios, people that are deciding to go through with it and then people that are going to push the pause button. And again, it's unique to their scenario. And I think the feedback helps. In Champion Center's history, back in the 08 crash, we were in the middle of a building campaign that we paused because it was so dramatic for us and we were so affected. Um, we're not in that season right now, so we don't we don't have that story ourselves. But we are working with a lot of teams right now who are saying we are in this season, and it's it looks different for each church and location based on demographics, based on just what the unique members of that church are facing. So, great answer, Pace. Thank you for that, Pastor Ryan. I yeah. I think maybe you could even elaborate better than I can because you were here for it, but you you just reminded me that in two thousand nine. Our, our, our legacy offering has been going on for thir over 30 years now, yep. and uh, it, it historically has always been in the spring. And so spring 2009, there are all these pledges and all of these things that people have been preparing for to give, yep. and all of their, all of their, a lot of them had lost their jobs, a lot of business owners had gone out of business, yep. and Pastor Kevin got on the stage a couple of weeks prior and he symbolically ripped up a pledge envelope yep. and he said, Hey, I want, I want shame off of you. I want you to know some of you guys made some big, some big pledges in faith. And I want you to know as your leader, like you can, you need to do what you need to do. And, and that did translate to our lowest legacy offering to date at that time. I mean, going back to like maybe the very first few years, but it had, it, it translated to a significant drop. But what, what Pastor Kevin gained in influence in that time. I, I've had legacy team members that have been around since then that have come up to me and told me these stories and how much, how much that energized them and how much it, it made them love their church more. Yeah. And, and ultimately, I believe they're still part of this church and part of our legacy team now giving at a high, high level because of the faith of our leader. He didn't know where that was going to take him. And that was scary when you're in a building project, but we did still go through with the offering, yep. but there was a communication of, Hey, we understand that you guys are in hard times, but let's give what we can and let's see what God can do. Yeah. Plain. And like you said earlier, guys, every, we're in this for the long haul. This is a marathon. We want, we want to honor Jesus for the long haul and live well and seasons come and go for all of us and business leaders and everyone has different economic seasons we all walk through and being sensitive to that I think is really wise and you can still exercise your faith and so for those of you when you're translating that what that looks like sometimes is and we do this often and that's why I've, I've loved our leaders so long from the very beginning the way they teach generosity is it's never about giving like when we're encouraging people even in ourselves in our own spiritual walk it's not about giving what we don't have like God's never asking us to give what we don't have, but in the seasons we're in, you know, it's, it's taking time to really consider what does that look like? So in that season we're talking about here, you know, for a lot of people, their economic situation changed dramatically and not putting guilt or heaviness on people because of that shifted for them uh, is what we're trying to get at. So thanks for bringing that out, Chris. Um, one of the other questions we're, we're getting low on time and I want to make sure we address it. What are we doing for Easter? Uh, Pace, I'm going to throw that your way again because you're a lead pastor and you're, you're in that hot seat right now. What are you going to do for Easter this year, sir? We're, pre we're preparing for both, but with the understanding that more than likely we'll be online. So we're really trying to think about ways that we can um, promote Easter. Um, we would have done this, you know, to some extent anyway, you know, online as far as promoting, you know, via Facebook and Instagram, but we're trying to think of some creative ways that we can do some video grabs and stuff, um, some creative content to begin, you know, to, to promote, um, to promote our Easter. So 
yeah, we'll probably shoot a little bit differently. We'll probably yeah. may, set it off a little different. It wouldn't look like a normal because we'll, you know what we won't do is bring in all the production, you That's know, right. like we would normally for Easter. So like so, but so how can we set it off differently online? If they're used to seeing, you know, right now we're not doing. I know a lot of guys are doing like living room sets and that kind of thing. I think that's great. Um, we may hold off to do that for Easter <laughs> or, you know, set yeah. it off different, you know, for that, just so that there is a differentiating moment. I love that. Yeah. We're, we're doing the same thing. And this leads me to another question and Troy or Chris, if you want to pipe in on Easter, uh, feel free. But the, the other thing is the shift in budgeting. And I think this falls right in line with Easter and I'll, I'll mirror those two questions or pair these questions together. I know for us at champion center, we have pivoted our whole Easter budget dramatically different than where we historically would be. And everything right now is focused online for us. And obviously we're all making adjustments and things have shifted so much. So we're doing the very same thing that Pastor Pace suggested, having a plan both ways. It just, in our area, we are, you know, in, in the Seattle region specifically, we're kind of at ground central for everything hit. And so it's not looking like Easter Sunday is going to happen. Now it still could. So we'll prepare that way. But we have completely shifted. So Chris, you can talk to this a bit on the budgeting side of things. How are we shifting? One of the questions that came up was how are we shifting budgets in this season? Yeah, I, I would say the first thing is, uh, I mean, we're one, one and a half, maybe two weeks into this. And so we're watching very closely right now to try to, to, try to see where, where are things gonna bottom out because that will ultimately have an impact. And if it bottoms out to where most of our digital giving just stays where it's always been and cash and check is the only thing that doesn't come in, that's one thing. But if that digital also continues to go down or starts to go down, you know, if we're looking at, are we looking at a 20% reduction? Are we looking at a 40% reduction? Are we looking at 60%? So those are the scenarios that I'm watching for. Uh, on behalf of my leader, so he doesn't have to be thinking about those things. Right. Um, when he's ready for that information, I need to be ready to give it to him in an accurate way. So that's kind of the hat that I'm wearing and the armor bearer that I'm being for my leader. But one weekend, two weeks in is really not enough time uh, for that. So I'm watching weekly where are things going, and then I'm going to start making projections here over the next week or so um, after we get maybe one or two more weekends in. But immediately, I start thinking about what are, the, what are the savings that we already have by not being open on the weekends? Mm. So I'm, I'm thinking about really small practical things like kids' snacks and curriculums and games and team headquarters expenses and paper products for the bathrooms. And right. um, I mean, even something like energy costs, which is a little bit, a little bit more elusive to, to pinpoint an exact dollar sometimes. But those are all, those are all practical things that don't have to feel like a budgetary cut because it's just, it's just happening. And then there's the things that you have to know, okay, I'm going to feel this cut. And that might be some subscription services, or that might be, um, you know, really having to look at, at payroll at some point uh, in the very near future, depending on where those things go. And there's different solutions around that. But at the, I think really the bigger question when it comes to budget is what should I be investing in right now? Great. Because that, that, that's the key to, to weathering, I think, some of this unknown is not just going into a shell of let's cut anything and everything because some things actually need to be ramped up. That's right. And so for us, that digital presence, we're ramping that up. And I, I had our team reach out to us after the first weekend and say, hey, this piece of equipment has been on the fritz. And if this thing goes down, it completely undermines everything that we're doing. Okay, we're getting that taken care of right now. Get that overnight shipping so that we have it here by the next capture experience. Um, whether that's Facebook and Instagram ads, whether that is um, you know, su supporting our team. So even like these webinars that we're doing, we're not just doing this for team church, we're doing this for men's groups, women's groups, we're doing this for Financial Peace University online. That started last night. We had to actually increase our budget in order to accommodate all the accounts that have to run simultaneous with each other. If we don't think that way, if we don't think what is mission critical to help us move forward in this digital age, we will sign our own death warrant. Like, like that's just the way that it's going to work. So I think for us, if you're in this chat or in this, this webinar and you are a finance person, 
your natural instinct is going to go to slash, 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 cut, cut, cut. <laughs> and you cannot think that way. Yes, you need to be like, have part of your brain there, but you got to keep another part of your brain open yeah. to, to allow for innovation to happen and for, uh, to allow for that digital connectivity to actually be meaningful. Great. That's uh, right. Can I just add one thing? There's so much wisdom from what Chris and Pastor mm -hmm. Pace said. I think it's spot on. Like we don't know what the future holds, but let's plan both. I would just say in all of that planning, make sure you have systems and processes. Easter is our Super Bowl. There's going to be so many guests and the beauty of having it all digital is there's no limitations from chairs or pews. We don't have fire code. There's no borders or wow, boundaries wow, wow. from people that can participate in your online. So so as you resource that, make sure that as you're getting first-time viewership, that you have metrics, that you have data points, you can follow up. Pastor Pace can write a handwritten thank you card that we're still right. nurturing people through this funnel and through this pipeline. Don't forget about that because there's going to be so many people that do come that would not have come to a physical location. So there's a chance to maximize that moment as well too. So good. Hey, something to you guys just consider just real quick and do what you want to with it where some business leaders and owners may take a, a hit financially here, some will actually have great gains. So just consider that like with who's within your church and yeah. right. who your, you know, lead leader, you know, financial leaders are there very well may be some who are blessed tremendously in this season. That's exactly it. And guys, that's really, really helpful. I know one of the other just practical things, I'm going to just go through a couple, if we could almost like lightning round a couple practical tools. One of the practical tools that I'm exploring with our team, which some of you may already have in place in your church, but you know, you could call it Zendesk. It's a feature that just aggregates all communi incoming communications, sets it up in a help desk way. This is the best time for us to start thinking this way because we have a team. We're all online now. We have whether it's volunteers or staff members, we have people that are ready to help. And if we set up all of our incoming communications from text or email or other, and it's aggregated and then assigned to people, we just want to make sure we're following up well into Troy's point. This is a great opportunity. I'm, I'm actually taking this on to go, how can we do this better at Champion Center? Um, we just flipped a new website over, um, built specifically for this time we're in. We just did it literally yesterday. And one day we took a team of about almost eight people flipped our whole website over and in the process we're saying how to all the incoming communications so we're looking for a tool to do that there's several out there but just a thought one of the other questions Troy I want to kick this your way um, Amy asked us and she said uh, where did you go Amy there it is I'd be interested to know what what apps people use for their giving I've heard push pay tithely what others are there out there uh, push pay is not for everybody. We're for somebody and we would be happy to serve you, but Tithely is a great provider out there. You can do a lot through uh, your church management software system, whether you're using Church Community Builder, Planning Center Online, Fellowship One, Arena, ACS. There's so many CHMS tools out there. A lot of them do have an app. Subsplash is a local Seattle-based company that makes a lot of great church apps as well too. Uh, there's a plethora of them out there. Find the right fit for you. I think you said her name was Amy, Pastor yeah, Ryan. That's right. Make sure it's the right fit for you. Make sure that they can scale and grow with you as your church grows and scales during this time as well. Make sure that they have support on weekends. Um, you're going to need a lot of support during weekends, not just Monday through Friday. So make sure that whoever you choose from a vendor standpoint can support you on weekends. Um, those are some of the ones that come top of mind. There's a lot of good vendors out there. Push pay is not for everybody, but we are for some people. Thank you for that. And I wanted to say we're getting close here. Um, I want to pray with all of you really quickly here. And again, thank you, Chris, Pace, and Troy for being with us. Thank you for investing the time. Um, hopefully, again, if your question for whatever reason was not addressed, we, our team will follow up afterwards and make sure we address that. We had several questions to get to, but I wanted to mention too, um, team Church is really a network of people. We have events and conferences. If you haven't been a part of what we do with Team Church, we'd love to have you a part of our Team Church Summer Conference. So that's coming up. You can find more about that at teamchurch.com. We also have, there's an incredible company. If you're looking for someone to help you with your technology in this season, there's an organization called Yellow Box who is doing a lot of incredible stuff at cost in this season. And that's pretty amazing that they're doing it at cost. They work 
for profit and they also work in the nonprofit sector and we've had a partnership with them for quite a while. They do incredible stuff. So if you're looking for an organization to help you digitally yellow box, um, they're, they're with us a lot at our conferences, but they're just looking for ways to serve the local church at cost right now in the season to help you out in whatever way they can. So again, uh, you can also find a lot of this recording. What we're doing is champion center through team church. We have a, a partnership now with the open network with, with which is life church. So any of our resources we have, we're making those available through the open network, but thank you again for being with us today. How about we pray and then uh, we'll head on our way. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity that we've had to gather and just really talk about things that are, are right in front of us. They're things we're dealing with as church leaders. And Lord, we know that, that you take care of us, Lord, as we put you first in our resources, in our time, in our prayer, in our worship. Lord, we believe that promise that you put forth in scripture, that you will look after the needs of your great church, of each and every one of us individually. God, I'm asking for protection over our families, over our churches. God, all the, all the men and women that we serve inside of our churches, Lord, that you would help us to uniquely connect with them, that we would come more alive than ever before in this season. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I pray you get more glory than you've ever gotten before. We're so thankful we get to do this, God. We want to be helpful. We want to make sure we add value to your kingdom. Lord, help us to see the stories and to realize the opportunities right in front of us. So God, we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all again. Have an awesome week, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you.